What is up YouTube? It is Will Bridges here, back with another video, finally. I am so sorry that I couldn't post any more in the recent few weeks because uh, our dog chewed up my cable that connects my portable hard drive to my computer, so I don't have enough internal storage to store, you know, a video shot in 1080p, but I am back, finally, and I have a bunch of new gear that I'm ready to show you guys. So, strap yourselves in, this is gonna be a what's in my gear bag video. First things first, I'd like to start this video out with a little bit of a uh, box opening without the box video for my new shotgun microphone. Uh, gosh, this is a Tackstar SGC598. Uh, it's a fantastic little shotgun mic. I got it for about $25 or so on Amazon. I just really needed my sound quality for these videos to be a little bit better, so I went ahead and picked it up and uh, I'm gonna shoot the rest of the video with it recording. Now it's just the in-house Icon D5600 microphone, which really isn't that great. Hopefully the sound quality gets shot up through the roof, you know, who knows. Also, one more thing before I get to this, I got another attachment to add to the hot shoe on top of my camera. It's a little V bracket that goes on top of there that allows me to have two hot shoe compatible devices sit on top of my camera at the same time. Uh, because, you know, I have my, my little light up there and I also want to put this on there at the same time so it'll just fit right in there and then you guys will get light and good uh, audio quality. It'll be fantastic. Uh. Alright guys, we're back. Hopefully the audio is picking up well. Um, I haven't really tested it at all yet, so we're just gonna see how it goes for this video. If I need to reshoot this segment, I definitely will. If not, then you guys will have a crispy clean video. Now that we've got that out of the way, um, I have a few new pieces of equipment that I'd like to show you guys, um, including the bag itself that houses my whole sh whole deal. This is perhaps the most important besides the camera and the lenses. It is my gear bag. Now, I've been putting a lot of thought into what bag to get. I didn't want to spend too much money because my budget is pretty low for this stuff. And also, I wanted to get a bag that actually held all of my equipment, you know, so that I can go out and not feel like I have to go back home and get some equipment that I need for a shot and, you know, subsequently get a lesser quality shot. You know, I wanted to be able to house all of the important necessities that I got. So I got a newer camera case, waterproof, shockproof, 11.8 by 5.5 by 14.6 camera bag, pretty much. Um, I just wanted to read the specs on there so you could get a good feel of what it was in case you wanted to check out what I got. I'll put links in the description to the Amazon um, page where I got this stuff. Uh, purchased most, of, most if not all of these things off of Amazon. So this bag, um, it comes with two mesh pockets right here that you hold smaller accessories in, whether it's you know batteries or camera cords or lens covers, if you don't keep your lens covers on your lens for whatever reason. Pencils, pens, Sharpies, that kind of stuff. You know, just the, the little things that you want to throw in there, but you don't really want to put in a pocket because this bag does not really have pockets. So two mesh bags right here. Also, it comes with these super squishy, super, you know, movable, portable uh, dividers in the bag. Um, the bag is split up into sort of a T figure. You have these little squares that you can pull out and move around depending on your equipment needs. You can put them back in there any way you see fit. I prefer to keep it the way um, the bag had it come because it seems to fit all my stuff perfectly that way. In the future, if I need to move it around for different equipment necessities, then I can. Uh, these strips right here are the long strips. They don't really move very much. I mean, you can pull them out. You can pull everything out of this bag, but they don't subdivide into little squares like the rest of them do. All right. I would show you how my gear fits in here, but I only have one camera right now, so, and I need to shoot videos on it, so. Just do your best to use your imagination. The camera goes right here, and lenses and whatnot. And you guys get it. One really cool feature about this bag that I would like to mention is that it has a tripod holder on the side. It has a little mesh pocket that you could perhaps fit 
a bottle in if you want because there is one on either side so it's not like you're wasting and you can stick your tripod into here and there's a buckle up here at the top that you can actually secure it now this is just a desk mounted tripod i'm currently using my tripod tripod right now tripod 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 right now to film this video but this is here just in case i need it for whatever reason i could use it as like a handheld deal or whatever so that's cool <clears throat> Enough about the bag, let's get to the fun stuff. Now, of course I have my camera, which I'm not gonna show you because it's currently shooting the video and I'm pretty sure that's physically impossible, so that's just not gonna happen. But just in case you were wondering what I'm shooting on, I'm shooting on a Nikon D5600 and I have a battery grip in there just because I do not like small cameras. I never have liked small cameras. My father's cameras were always really big and bulky just from the time that he was shooting and he also was a fan of the battery packs. And I tried to take the battery pack off and just shoot with the smaller feeling camera and I really just did not like it. It was harder to use, it was harder to hold on to. I felt like I was gonna break the damn thing. So keep that on there at all times so my meaty hands can meet it up. I'm just joking. <clears throat> the first lens I would like to talk about is the oldest one. It is a, what is it, a 35 to 70 millimeter, uh, which is really cool. Reason I like this camera, or reason I like this lens rather, is because it has this feature that I can't really describe. It allows me to lock my... It allows me to turn it kind of into a macro lens, which is really neat. I'm not really sure how to explain it. You just bounce it all the way to 35 and then lock the f-stop to whatever it locks to. It's really hard to figure out what this camera does, or this lens, I keep calling it a camera. It's really hard to figure out what this lens does because all the paint, if you can see, is like scratched off. It'll be out of focus if I hold it up here, but like, it's, it's, it's all scratched off. It's just really old. I shot on it a long, long time ago. Suffice it to say, I know how to use it. I just don't know how to describe it. It has a macro feature. I don't know if it can be called a macro or not by today's, you know, lingo, jargon, if you will. It just takes really good up close stuff and I really like it. 35 to 70 millimeter. Next, we have the one that I've been really waiting to get to because I just got it the other day. Uh, it's a 50 millimeter Nikon, or Nikkor, excuse me, AFS 50 millimeter 1.8G. Now, most of you who are watching this video might not know what I'm talking about when I say this, so let me just break it down for you really quick. Uh, autofocus AFS means that it's silent silent autofocus. What that means is that the autofocusing mechanisms and motors are instead of being in the camera or controlled by the camera are actually in the lens itself, which is nuts. It's, it's, it just blows my mind. Now I have a nice enough camera to where if I got the just regular AF uh, without the autofocusing <clears throat> mechanisms and motors in the camera, I could still autofocus pretty well, but just in case you had like a Nikon D3 series or a D4 series or a D2 series even, you pop this on there, you'll be able to autofocus just like the pros. So that's really cool. 50 millimeter, that's just the, the focal length. Um, it's fixed, so that's 50 millimeters is what I'm gonna get. The 1.8G part means that the lowest or the, the, the most wide open aperture that it has, which is the space that allows light through the camera or through the lens into the camera, is, is uh, one 1.8. Uh, F slash 1.8. It's nuts. I really love it. I don't know if I botched that explanation or not, but if you're into cameras and into photography, then you know exactly what I'm talking about. If not, then later down the line for YouTube videos, I'll probably do an instructional video about how the mechanisms of photography works. <clears throat> I know there are plenty of other videos out there on how to do it, but I feel like it'll really teach me to learn about the craft if I have to study on it and then produce some sort of product. So I'll be doing that at some point down the road. Keep a lookout. Next is, I'm not gonna be able to show it to you guys, but I have a uh, Nikkor, what is it, 18 to 140 millimeter on the camera right now, which is what I'm shooting with. I would be shooting with the 50 just so I could show you guys, but it's, it's too close. Like I gotta hold, I gotta put the camera like super far away and I didn't wanna have to struggle with the audio being possibly terrible and all that stuff. So. You, you, you get which what you get. But just to explain it to you right now, it's an 18 to 140 millimeter. Uh, it zooms in pretty good. It has a 3.5 aperture at the lowest, which when it's at its 18 millimeter uh, focal length, um, but it is a variable aperture lens, which means that when I zoom, the aperture actually changes. So the lowest aperture I can get changes depending on my focal length. So at 18 millimeters, it's 3.5. At 140 millimeters, it's at 5.6. 
Suffice it to say, it is not fast glass. I was just having a conversation with my father today about how it will start to get in the way when I'm shooting low light stuff. And I do like to shoot events. I do like to shoot concerts and performances. And it does get kind of dark, depending on where you are and how the venue is set up, it gets kind of dark. And that will end up getting in my way in the long run, which is why I'm so glad to have that 50 millimeter. Not to gawk about it, I'm just like a little excited schoolgirl. I just got my nifty 50, finally. Back to the 18 to 140 millimeter. Variable aperture, pretty crazy stuff. I love it, I love it, I love it. Next piece of equipment. See, I have all this stuff written down, but I haven't actually decided which ones to talk about first. Okay, so my light panel. I guess I can pull this off to show you guys what it looks like. Ugh. Right now, I'm using just the natural light coming in through the window. Um, this is without my light panel. This light panel is a ESDDI light panel with 3200K to 5600K temperature control. And basically what that means is, gosh, my cat's like clawing at my foot right now. Basically what that means is it makes you look spooky. No, you can change the temperature of the light to make it either cold, like really warm, I'm sorry, or really cold which is very, very useful for shooting in low light scenes where you wanna get a consistent light going on somebody or maybe shooting a video. I have in, in the past used this for models that I've been shooting just to light them up a little bit, but I've recently got another piece of equipment that'll make this uh, useless when it comes to shooting models like that. Uh, I can't wait to show you, but that's a little bit later. Suffice it to say, I really only use this for videos now. Videos and videos and videos. And in some cases, videos. So you know, I'm gonna plop this back on top of the camera and get back to shooting. So the rest of this video, I mean, gosh. I like a little bit of a warmer light, that's my favorite. So much better, right? With the light, it just makes it look 30 to 40 to 80 times better. Those are accurate numbers, look it up in my encyclopedia right there. The next piece of equipment that I'll be covering is my flash. Now. I, I really don't know how to pronounce the brand. I don't know if it's Nissan or Nissan or Nissan or Nissan. No, it's spelled N-I-S-S-I-N. -S -S -I if you can enlighten me on how to pronounce that, then that would be great. If not, then don't give me shit in the comment section. I'm sorry, I don't know. It's not, a, it's not even a word. It's, it's a proper noun. It can be pronounced anyway. It's just a preemptive defense against the hell that is the comment section on YouTube. A Nissan Digital DI700A. Really cool flash, really bright. It has a through the lens option, which communicates with the camera to meter through the actual camera itself. It also has its own meter on the front. I guess it's an infrared meter. Uh, so when I put it on auto, it actually reads the light coming in through this little window here and makes it all happen. Also has a manual option that I've used before I actually figured out how to work it. I used the manual and uh, all in all, really good flash, but it's not good for everything. If you're a photographer out there, then you know, then using a flash like this is always way too harsh to put on a particular subject, depending on the light and you know how much you're using it. it it's just, it, it draws out all the color, it desaturates the picture and it bounces the highlights so goddamn high that when you go back and post and try to edit it, it's just, everything's pale and gross and ugh, I don't like it. So I just picked up a piece of equipment that I'm really excited to use, especially for modeling. It is an Altura light diffuser for a flash. Really, really cool. Now, I definitely know for sure that I'm pronouncing Altura right. I've heard it said so many times. So this is the, I wanna say the second biggest option that they have, but I feel like it's the smallest option that they have. It is a six inch by five inch. And what this does is takes the light and bounces it around this like reflective material in here and shoots it out of the front and it diffuses the light. Basically it makes the surface of the light bigger and it bounces it around in here so it sends it all kinds of different directions, effectively softening the light that gets on the subject, which is definitely something that I wanted. I was thinking about getting a sophisticated lighting setup, a strobe setup for shooting portraits and stuff like that, but not only do I not have the budget to do that right now, but I don't have the clientele to use it regularly, and I'd just be sitting here collecting dust until I got one or two models here and there, you know. So I decided to wait on that until I have a bigger clientele, a little bit more of a professional career, and got this instead. And 
I don't think I could be happier with a product that I spent like $12 on. I mean, this is just high quality stuff. Another cool feature about this is that it actually has a secondary diffuser that hangs out here. Now you have the option of using this. You can tuck it in around the side and it won't be used. Or if you'd like, you can take it and hook it up here. So it'll hang right in front of the flash when you put it in there and it'll work. So I'll show you what that looks like on the flash. It's nuts. I'm so excited to be using this stuff. Okay. It also has rubber uh, spray on stuff. I don't really know what to call it. It's just like rubber inlays that they put on the inside of the diffuser to make sure that it's like tight, it won't move. It just ups the friction so that even if it gets knocked or something like that, it won't get taken off. In addition to that rubber, it also comes with an elastic Velcro strap that once you can manage to put it on there, it's actually really easy to put on. I'm just making it look a lot harder than it actually is. You take the strap and stretch it all the way around to the Velcro side on there like that. It's on, it's not going anywhere. And then you stretch it out like that and then there you go. And then you have a soft box pretty much and it does that. Really good stuff. Um, I don't know if I should mention for an equipment video, but just in case you guys were wondering what I use to edit my photos, I have a MacBook Pro. I believe it's a 2015 MacBook Pro. I could have a little bit more memory on it to just you know smoothen out how things run on my computer, but it gets the job done. I love it. I've never had any problems with it. The software that I use to edit my photos, I use Adobe Lightroom uh, Classic, preferably, because I just grew up using Classic. I also have Lightroom CC. I don't know if you guys like that. It seems a little too modern-y for me, kind of like a cell phone app. I feel like kids coming into it nowadays will use that or be more comfortable with it, but I just, I prefer the classic. So Lightroom, I have Photoshop that I very seldom use, seldomly use. I, I just haven't found the need to. Uh, some people want blemishes taken off of their faces, you know, this and that. I'm, I'm really a strong believer in taking a photo of what is and feeling the photo and surveying what is there and taking a picture of what is there in a beautiful way, capturing a beautiful moment. I don't, however, like taking pictures of people and they come back to me and say, why does my face look like this? Expecting to look like a model or something. Listen, if you want me to take a picture of you, expect to get a picture of what you look like, not you know, without any acne or without this or without that. That's, that's not what I'm here to do. I'm here to take your photo. I'm here to observe something that's beautiful and capture it, capture the light, capture it bouncing into my camera and make something beautiful out of it, okay? That's it. Sorry, that was a little shady, but I just, it, too many people come to me and, and say, you know, I like your photos, but I don't like your editing because my face looks like this. And I'm just like, well, sir or ma'am, that's what your face looks like. That's what it looks like. I made it look as real as possible. Now, if you want a certain blemish removed, I can understand that and I can do that, which is why I would use Photoshop. But if you're getting upset with me because you came out looking exactly how you look, then sorry, you're in the wrong business. You probably want a painter or maybe you should just get plastic surgery if you don't like what you look like. Also, for my video editing for these YouTube videos, I do use Premiere Pro. Now, of all three of those programs, Premiere Pro is what I know how to use the least. But hopefully through shooting these videos once a week, like I already said I would, I'll get even better. That's, that's the goal. I don't think I have any other equipment to go after. So if you liked what you saw, hit like. If you wanna see more videos or see the video that I posted before this, hit subscribe. If you wanna you know, get notified whenever I post any other videos, hit the little bell button and I hope to see you guys around. See ya.